Yo, what is going on? This is Philip Jean Marie, aka Max Cooper. I'm actually here at the Power Morphicon and I wanted to show you my wonderful helmet. Um, I also wanted to uh, shout out everyone who watched uh, Power Rangers Wild Force and even the, the old fans and the new fans. I um, also want to let you guys know, uh, shout out to Tiger Tales. It's an audio storytelling uh, channel on YouTube. Uh, make sure to go ahead and like and subscribe. And also wanted to let you know, uh, you know, if uh, you're going through some issues in life, remember three words, never give up. All right? So I hope everyone is doing well. Love you a lot. Peace. Hello everybody and welcome to Tiger Tales, a place you'll find stories and fan fictions written and read to you by your host, me, Ty Tiger. Today we're diving back into our Marvel and DC fan fictional universe. A universe created where I very cleverly have combined the rights of Marvel and DC and all their properties into one ongoing universe with multiple stories that have been told and yet to tell. You can find all these storylines in a playlist on Tiger Tales and more storylines on Tiger Tales Lost Story where it's revolve all in the same universe which cross over and interject and all sorts of stuff. Something strange has been going on lately with all these uh, random storylines. As you will see as the storylines continue, there is a meadow and certain heroes that you will know have popped up. You see, after Union Day, the day that combined the two universes, a lot of heroes and villains magically disappeared. Well... Some of them have come back in the middle of memories. Let's continue and find out what's been going on. All right, Ty Tiger. Here it comes. My next performance as Deadpool. At this point, I have played Deadpool more for other people than for Carl over at Scyther. Deadpool and Deathstroke. Chapter 1. Welcome to Smallville. Act 1. What is going on? 14 days ago, the world had survived an invasion of the parties. Now the world was trying to move on from that event. During the invasion, our heroes and villains had to work together, but after they saved the world, they continued with their own journeys. In the meadow of memories, a flash of rainbow-coloured light... Ten individuals appeared, their eyes all white, their bodies without love, hate, passion, or sadness, without any memory. Two of those individuals was the mercenary with a mouth, Deadpool, and the lone wolf assassin, Deathstroke. They immediately walked out of the field till they reached the closest town. Then their eyes returned to normal and their memories came flooding back. Oi, dumbass! Shut up! It's my debut on Tiger Tales, and this is what you want to talk about? You're journeying on and on about memories and stuff. People do not care! You have me working with Deathstroke. You know the Wish or AliExpress version of me. But still, it's Slade. I have issues with Slade. He's practically a bootleg, and you know how people feel about bootleg action figures. I don't care if he came first or not! Excuse me, um, this is my channel. I wrote the story. This is my universe. I combined Marvel and DC into one whole universe to create new stories. Wow, look how that is working out for me. You pair me up with Slade. Why not Catwoman? She is hot! But not the Halle Berry version. We don't talk about the Halle Berry version. Although the Michelle Pfeiffer version kind of scares me a little bit. She's a little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Or maybe Starfire. She is an alien. And unlike in Teen Titans Go, definitely over 18. I don't care if this requires a company crossover that is impossible to do anymore. I need to have myself a DC girl. Okay, dude, sh shut up. First off, Starfire is coming soon, just not in this one, in a different story, which has already been established. And second of all, you love Lady Death. Yeah, and have you put her in this universe? No. Did not even think so. God damn it. And quick question, why am I being voiced by the same... Why am I being voiced by that Scyther audio dude? 
again. I get it. This is a fan production. You can't afford Ryan, but still. And he's still wasting too much time playing the snarky bonehead, who, according to some nerd on Twitter, is my tag team partner. That's only a little weird. I'm just saying. Couldn't you have at least tried, oh, I don't know, John Kassir? I don't know how much work he's getting anymore. Okay, okay, I will throw in some hot chick later. And yes, you're being voiced by Nate again. Two reasons. One, he does a fantastic job and was willing to help me. And two, Ryan Reynolds is goddamn expensive. Okay, fine. I have thought about it and sure, I'll do it. I'll be your Deadpool. But I want some good fight scenes. Like, stuff choreographed by Koichi Sakamoto. Watch some tokusatsu, okay? You'll understand what I'm talking about. He played a lizard man on Power Rangers. And a stripper scene with big butts. I mean, I want the strippers to have big butts, not the scene. The script is a little weird. But I read it anyway. For you, Ty. I mean, huge. I like big butts and I cannot lie. You know what I mean? I want those butts to be sexy and juicy. Like, pour the tomato juice all over it. That kind of sexy. Watch Ninja 3 The Domination. You'll get it. Get Jared from If You Give a Dad a Podcast and Billy, yeah, Billy from the Zero to Hero Podcast to be the strippers. Those are my conditions. I will have no exceptions. Exactly zero. My people will call your people. Okay, okay, I will see what I can do, but you're gonna have to tell Jim that he doesn't get to do his Sasquatch routine. Deal! Now, please continue with your lazy story here. Wouldn't be the first time I've dealt with this. Watch Deadpool 2. Deadpool and Deathstroke both mindlessly walked out of the field till they reached the closest town. Then their eyes returned to normal and their memories came flooding back. Where am I? Deathstroke asked. I know, right? So confusing. I'd need a brain transplant to understand it, but my body keeps rejecting every new brain they try to give me, mostly because my old brain keeps growing back, but you understand what I'm talking about. But you get what I mean. Deadpool said sarcastically. Both of them wandered around until they saw the sign that read Smallville. We better hide. Deathstroke muttered. Great plan. Or is it? Deadpool nodded enthusiastically. They both carried on walking, the public giving them odd looks, as two costume mercenaries walked around aimlessly. Then Deathstroke stopped and turned around. Wait. Why are you following me? Go away. And sort yourself out, Wade. Deathstroke growled. He started to turn away from Deadpool, but Deadpool grabbed him and slapped him across the face. Hey, for some reason, we get put together. It's like someone thought, hey, Slade and Wade rhyme. They're similar. Why not put them together? But that is destiny, my friend. Let's stick together. I need you, and you need me. Admittedly, my track record with team-ups is eh, not great, although my team-up with Peanut, I mean Badger Man, did rake in a ton of money, highest grossing R-rated movie of all time. Come on, it's gotta count for something. Deadpool barred to him. Fine. Let us work together to sort out how to get back to Metropolis. Or New York, at least. Deathstroke muttered. Cue the instant fight scene, because there's been too much talking now. Time for some action. Cue the music. X gonna give it to you. Gonna give it to you. X gonna give it. Okay, fine. Deadpool mumbled under his breath. Suddenly, several police cars came up and came to a halt. The police officers climbed out and pulled out their guns. It is illegal to dress up as superheroes. Oh, in this case, assassins. You know the rules. Now hands up. One police officer yelled. It's illegal to dress up. Deathstroke asked back, rather confused. By the law of Benadiah Seed, all superpowers or masked heroes slash villains are legal, and all hero acts are legal as well, under the Sacred Brother Act, the officer yelled. Deathstroke placed his hands on the hand of his sword. Don't do it, son. You are no hero. You're just dressed up like two very dangerous individuals, the officer barked. Dressed up? 
I am not dressed up as Deadpool. No Halloween costume looks as good as this. Oh, no, 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 no. I am the one and only until the multiverse gets involved. Ugh, we all know how that's going. Right, Marvel? Deadpool called out, removing his mask, revealing his ugly and scarred face. Code Grey! We have a Code Grey! We have the Deadpool and the Deathstroke. I repeat, the actual Deadpool and Deathstroke! Another officer barked into his walkie-talkie. Then the officers started shooting at the duo with their pistols. Deathstroke grabbed Deadpool and used him as a human shield. Each bullet struck him, blood splattered all over Deathstroke's suit. Deadpool pushed Deathstroke back, making himself stumble. Duck! Now! Deathstroke ordered. Deadpool ducked as Deathstroke pulled out two semi-automatic pistols and fired them. Bullets flew over Deadpool's head. Deadpool turned to see the police officers drop into the floor full of bullet holes. And Deadpool then stood up and drew one of his swords from their sheath on his back and he ran up to an officer and slashed him down. Then he flipped over the police car and stabbed the last remaining officer who was using the car for cover, his sword going right through the officer's chest. Everyone ran away screaming. Huh. A bit lacking for a first fight, but I get what's happening. Roping in the viewer so they get excited. Chapter 2 makes sense. Oh, let me guess. A new character for some lore and information dumping? Gotta be careful with those. We'll call him Captain Exposition. Metaphors. Deadpool muttered to himself as he put his sword away. Deathstroke and Deadpool regrouped as Deathstroke reholstered his guns. Why these fools are running their mouths about some religion and this... Badiah Seed Guy? Deathstroke growled. I don't know. I have no... idea what's going on. Mostly because I don't have the rest of the script. And this is an original story and not an adaptation. You will get no information from me except for my name, rank, and serial number. I am Private Ryan... Oh, wait. I'm really confused. Deadpool muttered. Suddenly, someone came stepping out of the shadows. A big bulky man with a large beard and a cowboy hat on his head. Well, well, well. Look at the mess you made, the man said. And you are? Deathstroke asked. My friends call me Jim. So, call me Jim. I am here to help, the man said. Help us how, Jimmy? Are you the one from NASA? Oh, wait. That's the Scyther guy's other podcast. Excuse me. Deadpool asked him, Come with me, boys. I can give you a place to stay out of sight. Jim said, gesturing them to follow. Deathstroke and Deadpool looked at each other and then both sighed. They followed the Texan and followed him into an alleyway. They ran around and through the alleyway until they reached the back entrance of a bar. Jim opened it and led them inside. It was an old-looking rustic bar with only one older man sat in the corner drinking. Love what you've done with the place. I describe it to everybody, but this is audio only. I tell you what it looks like, but I don't have the rest of the script. Deadpool hushed as he looked around. Look, I know this is going to sound nuts, but uh, I knew you two were coming to stop Benadiah Seed. Jim grunted. Ugh, we need to get out of this tidy town, not save it. We are not heroes. Deathstroke growled at him. Actually, I've been known to save a universe or two. Have you seen my new movie? Even if I did need some help from Badger Man. I also killed a couple. Listen to the Red Corners Rangers episode with me. Shameless self-promotion! Deadpool said, butting in. Look, I am just relaying the message. Jim said, shrugging his shoulder. Jim went behind the bar, bent down and picked up her roll of paper. He then handed the paper to the duo. Deathstroke unrolled it and saw a picture of Deathstroke and Deadpool surrounded by a whole army. Both had weapons drawn and behind them was a church on fire. Want to know something crazy? That church isn't even open yet. It opens tomorrow, Jim stated. Oh yeah, love that build up. Just make sure you're released so you don't get blue balls. Ow. Deadpool cheered. We want to get out of here, not save them. Wade, come on. Deathstroke said he slammed the pitch down on the counter and stormed out of the bar. Deadpool shrugged at Jim, then followed Deathstroke. Hey, Kirito! 
Did you hear about that new podcast? What new podcast, Asu? It's called the Tiger Nexus Podcast, run by Ty Tiger. Hold on. I know that name. He's the guy behind Tiger Tales on YouTube, right? Yep, that's right. And now he's launched his own podcast where he interviews content creators and nerds of all kinds. No way, that sounds so cool. What's the name of the podcast again? The Tiger Nexus Podcast. You can find it on all major podcast platforms. Hold up, he's had Cosplay Dude 637 on there? That's amazing! I know, right? He's also interviewed A Crown, Mark the Red Corners Ranger, and many others. I am totally subscribing to the Tiger Nexus Podcast. I don't want to miss anything. Tune into the Tiger Nexus Podcast by Ty Tiger for fascinating interviews with your favorite content creators and nerds. Find it wherever you get your podcasts. Don't miss out. Both Deadpool and Deathstroke advance out of Smallville. They walked past the welcome sign and Deadpool tried to start a conversation, but Deathstroke kept telling him to be quiet. Suddenly, they came across a rather large cross made out of wood and scraps of metal stapled into the ground. A young woman's body strapped to the cross. She'd been there for a while and was almost a skeleton. She wore a similar suit to Deathstroke and there was a sign hanging off her neck that just said, Warning. This girl would have been so cool. She's wearing your mask, man. Deadpool chirped, nudging Deathstroke in the shoulder. That is Rose. She is my daughter. Deathstroke gasped. He pulled off his mask. His face fueled with rage. He turned around and stormed back the way they came, back into Smallville. Deadpool followed him. They stormed back into Jim's bar and Jim was sat on a stool, his feet up onto the counter and his face buried in a magazine. So, you saw her, huh? Mr. Pocket arrived the day that she was killed. Said her father would be wearing a very similar mask and similar suit with a bunch of weapons. And he'll want revenge, Jim stated without breaking his gaze from his porno magazine. This seed guy, he did this? Deathstroke asked. Oh yeah, moved in about a year ago, took over the place, using this word of a certain god or something, named it some random bullshit, definitely not a Christian, kills a whole bunch of people, and I mean a whole bunch, as punishment of some form of message or something, Jim explained, Deathstroke turned to Deadpool, his face still filled with rage, Deathstroke swore for revenge, then asked Deadpool if he wanted to tag along. Sure, I gotta stick around. My name is in the title of this story as well, so you're kind of stuck with me. Until I go back to Scyther. Carl, I need a progress report. Deadpool replied with a shrug. Deathstroke rolled his one eye, then turned back to Jim. You got a place for us to stay? Deathstroke asked him. Sure do. There's an apartment upstairs you can use. Jim stated. And a seed. He'll be at this opening tomorrow? Deathstroke asked him, pointing at the ch picture of the church on the counter. Yep. Jim nodded. Deathstroke turned to Deadpool once again. I think it's time we do what we do best. Deathstroke told Deadpool. Deadpool removed his mask and looked at Jim with his horrifying face. Count me in, Slade. Count me in. And I'll make sure the bad guys have death strokes and fall into the Deadpool. Ha <laughs> ha. Deadpool said with a big grin. If you want to see more stories in this Marvel and DC combined universe, make sure you check out the Tiger Tales Marvel and DC Fan Fiction Universe playlist on the Tiger Tales channel. You'll find all the storylines there. We have things from the Guardians of the Galaxy, X-Men, Mutants, we have things like the Bat Family and Red Lanterns. And then, of course, make sure you check out Tiger Tales Lost Stories, where they have more storylines in the same universe, always expanding. A huge thank you to my brother Freddy, who this is his actually first voice acting gig on this channel, so huge thanks to him. And another massive thank you to Nate for voicing Deadpool. He's actually coming from the Scyther Audio, which you better guys. Better go check those guys out because he does a more fantastic job over there as well. He's also just recently voiced Deadpool in Mark the Red Corners Rangers on Nerds Through Comics, the adaptation of Deadpool Kills the Entire Marvel Universe. So make sure you check that out as well. That being said, on with the outro. 
Thank you everybody for listening to this video and checking out the stories. Of course there are plenty more where that came from. I encourage you to check out the rest of this channel where you'll find more storylines for you to delve into. But there's even more than that. If you check out the description down below you will find a whole array of different Tiger Tales channels. Each Tiger Tales channel is made for a specific purpose and hosts a whole array of different types of storylines. So I encourage you to check out the other Tiger Tales channels and delve into a massive amount of storytelling by myself and the Tiger Tales partners. If you have enjoyed yourself today then please subscribe to the channel as it does show your support. Now of course, the whole reason why I'm doing this is because I'm passionate about story writing and storytelling. And of course, you should dive into what you are passionate about as well. So, I shall end this video with... Roll with passion. That before we can... <laughs> Don't touch my Pringles. <laughs> Bye!